welcome to worship. I'm glad that you are able to join us this morning on this very icy day. If you're joining us from home, thank you for staying home and um, safe, if that's what you felt you needed to do. Um, it is good to have you with us, though, this morning. Um, I am Pastor Amber, Deacon Joanne is with us, um, and this is Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. We are happy to have people with us this morning. Um, if you were expecting the children's Christmas pageant this morning, the weather has postponed it again. <laughs> um, uh, Cheryl, the Sunday School Superintendent, and I have often joked that if we're going to have a Christmas pageant, there's going to be a snowstorm, and we've done it twice now this year, so we're keeping with the history. Um, there will be communion later in the service, and so if you are uh, comfortable coming forward, you are welcome to do that. If you would prefer a prepackaged communion kit, those are available in the welcome space, and if you're joining us online, you are welcome to join us for communion as well. Grab some bread and wine or whatever you have that's closest to those things at home. I think that's all I have to share with you as we begin, and so I invite you to join me in the words of our purpose statement, the words that we have uh, claimed as our own that God is calling us to in this time and place. Please join me. Claimed by grace, we seek to welcome all, worship joyfully, grow spiritually, share God's love. I invite you to stand for the greeting, the call to worship, and the time of confession. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are marked as God's beloved ones. God's love is God's free gift for us, always and forever. God's love never vanishes from us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who sends the word with angels, who has made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace on all the earth. Amen. In Christ, we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the need. We are quick to anger, but slow to forgive. We have not put our love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace. That all we do, in word or deed, may reflect your love born among us. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. In Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are clothed in peace. Amen. Our gathering hymn is, As with Gladness and a Bold.
Let us pray. Almighty God and ever-living God, you revealed the incarnation of your Son by the brilliant shining of a star. Shine the light of your justice always in our hearts and over all lands, and accept our lives as the treasure we offer in your praise and for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. And good morning to all the children here and out there. Today we're celebrating Epiphany. Now Epiphany means to reveal. And in this case, God is revealing the Christ child to all the world, not only to the Jewish community. And he does this by getting three wise men from far, far away, from the Far East, to follow a star. Now I'm going to be a little later moving, I'm going to ask you guys if you'll help me move the wise men to the crash, but I wanted to make note that it wasn't nearly that easy a trip for the wise men. And I do have to insert here for the adults something I just saw on Facebook, that if it had been three wise women, we would have brought casseroles, formula, and diapers. But I digress. The three wise men were astronomers, and they studied the stars. They also studied God's word. And they were watching the stars, and they saw a star rise that they had never seen before. It was the biggest star in the sky and the brightest star in the sky. And they believed it to be announcing Jesus' birth. They knew that God had promised to send a Messiah to save all people. And they believed that God sent the star to lead them to the Christ child. They took all kinds of risks to find the Messiah. They risked their, their lives, probably, their time, their money. They went to a lot of work to find the Messiah. But they trusted God to lead them there. Now, when we are planning a trip, we, if it's a big trip, we start months ahead of time. And we go on the internet and we search for where we want to go, what's there when we get there. We, we search for hotels and make reservations. We ask people, where have you eaten? What's the best restaurants, restaurants to eat at? We pretty, and if we go by uh, a car, we use our GPS or a map to get the best route. We pretty know what's going to happen from the time we leave home until the time we get back. So I want you to think for a minute about what these guys did. They followed a star. Really? They went thousands of miles through the desert. They didn't know where they were going, how long it was going to take, what they were going to find when they got here. They had to trust, and that's what they did. They trusted God, and they believed that he was leading them to the Christ child. What faith they had. So what can we take from this story? Our lives are like the wise men's journey. We are all, young and old alike, still searching for Jesus. We don't have a map, and we don't have a star, but we have the Bible, we have the pastor, we have Sunday school teachers who are here to help us learn about Jesus. We can find our way to Jesus by studying God's word, and he will help us find our way. We just have to trust and love him. So, let's make the journey. Could I invite you kids to come up and help me with the moving the, the uh, three wise men over? Would you like to? I have four pieces. Any place you can find a spot. Uh, 
for the camel right back in here. Right the camel. Get it in there. Thank you. Throw this. Oh. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we seek you today because we want to worship you and crown you as our king. We are thankful for pastors and Sunday school teachers who want to help us, and we are thankful for the Bible which, you have been, which has been given to us to lead us to you. Amen. The congregation can help me with the blessing. Children of God, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Amen. What we're about to hear from in the book of Isaiah was likely written not long after the Jews uh, the Jewish exiles returned from Persia. They had dreamed about their homeland for 70 years while they had been in exile, and they were finally able to return. Unfortunately, when they get there, they find a shell of a country. They find Jerusalem destroyed, the walls torn down, the temple in shambles. They are reminded of the complete destruction that they faced when they were taken into exile. Now, many of those who returned probably had only heard stories of the greatness of Jerusalem. When they finally get there, what they find is a disappointment. And so Isaiah says to them, stand up, be ready to welcome the world, because everyone is going to want to come to Jerusalem and bring their wealth with them. Because Isaiah says, Israel is a shining light for all. To listen to this reading of hope. The first lesson is taken from Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba, Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall pro and proclaim the praise of the Lord. Here ends the reading. game this morning, and since our numbers are a little bit down, you guys have a lot of work to do. Uh, the reading that we're going to hear today is very familiar. It's the story of the wise men. And as you listen, I want you to look for opposites. Not really opposites, but things that are kind of at opposite ends of the spectrum from one another. Things that differ from each other. For example, in our first reading, the reading we just heard, there's this kind of interesting parallel, which is that the people of, of Israel had been taken out of Jerusalem and into exile, but now Isaiah says that all peoples will be brought to Jerusalem. So that's kind of like, see those opposing different ideas? So that's kind of what I want you to look for in this reading, and, um, and then we'll talk about it in the sermon. But so listen for those things that either don't make sense or are a little bit in opposition to one another. In the time of King Herod, 
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them, sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Our sermon hymn is We Three Kings of Oriental. Invite you to sing.
God our Father and the Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, what did you hear? What kind of opposite things showed up as we were listening? Did you hear any of them? What did you hear? I heard Herod being very afraid of his little tiny baby. There you go. Okay, there's one. Herod is very, very worried about a baby somewhere out there. That's one. That's for sure one. The wise men go to the palace. Yeah, the wise men go to the palace, right? Looking for a king. And the king is, well, there is a king there. It's just not the king they're looking for. Yeah. There's wealthy King Herod and not so wealthy maybe Jesus. There's lots of them. There's things like the, the greatness, the grandeur of Jerusalem versus the small town hamlet of Bethlehem. Or one of my favorites, the fact that these foreigners happen to know more about what's happening than the scholars of Jerusalem. Even in the prophecy that it talks about Jesus uh, from Isaiah, it talks about God will send this Messiah the anointed one that everyone thought was this, going to be this great military leader. And the prophecy says he will be a shepherd. He will be someone who cares for his people, not a warrior. There's lots of that in this particular reading. And I, I don't think it's necessarily unintentional. I think there may have been some intention to it. There's this... Um, I like to read this uh, one particular series, the mystery novel series, and it's based off of the old, older TV show, Castle. Anybody ever watched Castle? It was a story of a, a homicide detective, and she often, she had this writer that tagged along with her, her and he would often help solve her cases. And in the, the books that are sort of based out of the story, the TV series, um, one of the phrases that this detective uses with the rest of her squad of detectives is she, she uses the phrase odd sock. So she talks about like, hey, look for the odd sock, um, which is basically in her, her way of saying, look for the thing that stands out or that's weird or that doesn't fit with the rest of what you're seeing. Look for the piece of the puzzle that isn't quite in place. And oftentimes, of course, in the story, that would help them solve. So our gospel reading today, in my mind, is full of odd socks, things that don't quite make sense to us. And we started to notice those a little bit as we've been talking. But in a lot of ways, this story is completely backwards. Forget that you've been hearing the story your whole life, and just think about it for a minute. Nothing goes the way that our brains tell us things should go. First, we've got wise men traveling thousands of miles because they saw a star. A star that somehow to them told them a new king had been born in Israel. They knew that much. And so they leave their homes, they leave their families, they leave their work, they spend a whole bunch of money for gifts and for this trip. And they go searching for this baby. And they bring all kinds of expensive gifts that are definitely not baby approved. And they arrive, and when they arrive in Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, so it makes sense, that's where they would go, they start to search for this kid. But nothing ever tells us that they go to the palace to search for the king. They're just out in Jerusalem looking for the king. How come nobody in the street happens to know about this new king being born? Why didn't they bother to go to the palace? And I'm sure the wise men are thinking something similar. How come nobody, like... If a new king is born, there should be a big celebration. The whole town should know about it. Why is no one in Jerusalem aware of this king? So far, that's about three odd socks. On the other hand, we've got Herod and the other leaders in Jerusalem who can't figure out what these strangers are talking about. They have to go searching through their records of old prophecies to even get a clue. They're kind of wondering, is the Messiah out there? And we don't actually really want him to be here, because he's going to cause a lot of trouble. And how is it that these foreigners know more about what's happening than they do? Another odd song or two. Then Herod calls.
calls the wise men, because, you know, they didn't bother to go to the palace, and he tells them, well, the, the king might be in Bethlehem, this tiny little town a, a day away that nobody really cares all that much about. It's certainly got nothing on Jerusalem. It's just a little village full of everyday people. The king is there. But the wise men go searching for him, for him anyway, and the star goes with them, and that's good news, showing them to a house, a simple house, where a young mother and her little boy are playing with some wooden toys. Two small people, awed by the grandeur of the wise men. And these wealthy, powerful men from faraway places kneel down in front of that wobbly toddler and offer him gifts. And then they listen to a dream instead of the king that they made promises to and go home, sneak home, a different way. Let's see, that's a few more. I went about five or six on top of the other five or six we had odd socks in this story. It's a whole lot of backwards, bewildering facts, none of which we really expect. I mean, we know how the world works, right? We grew up in it. We have been inundated with societal norms and expectations. We know what's important. And one of those things that we know is that we've spent our whole lives learning how to get ahead, that we know but as people, we're sort of driven to have more. More stuff, more money, more power, more responsibility, more prestige. We expect that those things are important, that they'll make us happy or get us what we want in the end. And we understand that everyone is sort of on that same understanding, working toward those same kinds of things. And we know that getting ahead then means we have to compete. Stockpiling resources, striving for individual recognition, all that is standard to our lives. And unfortunately, those kinds of things can also lead us to sin. Creating situations where we're worried about greed or we end up being oppressive it invites us to see others and use them rather than to work together or value people's gifts. It leads to enemies and to distrust and to hatred. But it's kind of what we've been taught our whole lives, and so it's what we expect in our world. And so this story that we hear today seems like a whole basket of odd socks. It seems backwards and completely unreal to us, out of sync with reality. Because kings belong in palaces, surrounded by money and attendance and wielding power, and foreigners should stay out of the issues of the land. And long foretold prophecies should not be forgotten and eternally important people should not pop up in the humblest of villages with no warning. <clears throat> and that's the story we hear today. But we're going to find in the next several weeks that the story of Jesus is full of odd socks that go way beyond the story of the wise men today. We're beginning the season of Epiphany. A time that is about revealing Jesus. A time when we focus on learning about who Jesus is and why Jesus matters. It's a time when the readings and the stories that we hear illuminate the nature and the person of Jesus. A time when we are called to see Jesus more clearly. When we have an opportunity to catch a glimpse, a dawning of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. And so today we are invited to see a little bit more clearly. To see more clearly how we live in a world that wants power and recognition and status. But Jesus comes to this world with no recognition, no power, no status. Jesus comes as a helpless being. How we for wealth and expensive gifts, but Jesus is born in simplicity and poverty. How we draw lines in the sand and create in-crowds and outcasts, but 
But Jesus wipes those lines away and invites everyone to come to him. How we make assumptions about people and places based on our own prejudice and hearsay. But Jesus sees past all of that and knows us and our truth and then calls us to destroy the lies that we create out of fear. We are called to see more clearly who Jesus is. I was reminded by Facebook of all places, or rather someone on Facebook the other day, that in reality, not everyone wants to get to the top of the leaderboard. That despite what we tell ourselves and each other, not everyone wants the management position or the corner office. That not everyone is driven by straight A's or being the best player on the team. And that it is okay to allow ourselves to find joy in things other than being the best or getting to the top. That you can be successful and find meaning and be extremely fulfilled with absolutely no desire for advancement. And I have to admit, it kind of surprised me a little bit. It surprised me that I needed to be reminded of that. That I needed to be reminded that people grow in different ways and have different goals. Because we are so ingrained with that idea of getting ahead. But today, we are reminded that Jesus was not about getting to the top of the pile. Jesus was a king without a castle, without attendance, without wealth. He was a helpless baby among the humble poor. He welcomed the foreigners, the outcasts, the lost. He taught everyday people about the love of God. He healed the sick and the ignored, and he gave up his life for us rather than seeking. This is a bit of an odd sock. And I hope we see him more clearly this season. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have heard the word of the Lord proclaimed. I invite you to stand and join me in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, followed by the prayers of the Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and the life of our last day. Prayers will be read responsibly when I say, Merciful Father, please respond with, Hear our prayer. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By the Holy Spirit, you gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service, that all people know they are precious in God's sight. We pray for guidance and wisdom for our bishops, Lee and Elizabeth, and for our pastor, Amber, and all in positions of leadership. Merciful Father, you reveal your love and power through water and the Spirit. 
guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution, secure access to clean water for all, and protect the land from drought and flood. Establish among the nations the blessings of peace. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates who risk reputation or retaliation for the sake of mercy and justice. We pray for our nation's servicemen and women serving throughout the world, especially those serving in harm's way, and for their families and friends back home. Merciful Father, you protect us through the fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that we will not be cut off from you by illness or despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. Comfort all who are in need, especially the sick, the homeless, the lonely, and the addicted. This morning, we remember Barbara, Anita, Don, Fred, Sherry, Dagmar, Charlene, Betty, Marilyn, Kurt, Jim, Erica, Carol, Josh, Bob, Sandy, and Wayne. We pray for comfort and strength for Ann, Warren, Elsa, and Susan. Merciful Father, we are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and justice seeking. We pray for all ministries at Prince of Peace and lift up in prayer all who serve in God's name, especially our partner synod, the Central Southern Illinois Synod, and the EPI's program in Chile. Merciful Father, and now, Father in heaven, in this moment of silence, we offer our hopes, our concerns, our joys, and our sorrows that only you can see and feel in our hearts. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with those around you. sharing what God has given us, and so if you choose to make Prince of Peace a part of that giving, we give you thanks for that. Um, you're welcome to leave your offering in the plate on your way out. If you haven't done that yet, you can give through our website or through the uh, Portico or the Bank of Mobile app, that's it, Bank of Mobile app, um, or you can mail a check to the church. Today I want to thank you for the support that you give that keeps our children learning and engaged in the life of the church, whether that's Sunday school or confirmation or youth ministries um, or their participation in worship or training and supporting all of those things, you are a part of making all of that function and happen um, in wonderful ways for our children. So thank you for that. Today we are reminded that there is much to learn about Jesus because Jesus is not what we expect. In the perfect, in the perfect example of a relationship with God through Jesus, we are able to see God's love for each of us. At this meal, we connect with Jesus and his sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. We experience the promise of eternal life with God. Everyone is invited to this table. If you are here in this place, you are part of the church in this moment. You are welcome. 
you are invited, no matter where you are on your faith journey. At the right time, you'll be invited to come forward, receive a piece of the bread, and hear the words, the body of Christ given for you. Then you can choose for, well, we don't have a choice today. <laughs> There's grape juice today. We can't get into the wine cabinet while we're working on it. Um, but you can, you can take a uh, take a, a cup with some grape juice, hear the words, the blood of Christ shed for you. And then you can, after you've drank it, you can leave the empty cups in the baskets as you return to your seats by the side aisles. If you would like gluten-free, that's also available. Just let me know as you move forward, and I will get it for you. But know that you are welcome. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's manger, at Christ's table, come, see what God makes known for you.
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. A couple of quick announcements for you. If you'd like a 2022 calendar, there is some available on your way out the door um, in the welcome space. Um, also available on your way out the door in the welcome space are a bunch of poinsettias that no one took home. Please take them home. Enjoy them. Love them. Give them water so Anne doesn't have to water them anymore herself. <laughs> take them home. <laughs> Um, if you are a ministry team leader, our annual reports are due by January 19th. Um, get those into Melanie so that they're ready to go for the congregational meeting in early February. Um, the accolade training after this service has been canceled because of ice. Um, I think they're going to try and do that next week. Um, and then upcoming on January 23rd, which is two Sundays from now, um, we're going to be Having a little bit of a pet food drive, we're going to be collecting pet food and kitty litter to go in our food pantry. Um, apparently, the 24th is Change a Pet's Life Day. So we can change a pet's life on the 23rd um, by bringing some pet food. And if you're not joining us on that Sunday, you can absolutely drop off pet food um, in the bin by the office doors anytime, um, along with other food pantry items if you would like. I think that's everything I have. Take the points out as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I invite you to stand as you are able for the benediction in our Sunday song. And now as you go from this place, go knowing that you are saved by grace. You are justified. You are forgiven. You are sought out, beloved, hidden in Christ, and made for the glory of God. You are known. You are never forsaken. You are held in the palm of God's hand. You are loved. May the peace and power of our God be with us until we gather again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song is, O Morning Star, How Fair and Bright. We're going to sing four verses, right?
in peace. Serve the Lord.